We're here at the start for the final of the men's under-17 double at the Royal Canadian Henley Regatta 136th edition. The bottom of your screen in lane two, we have Seattle. Lane three, Don's Rowing Club from Mississauga celebrating their 140th anniversary this year. Lane four, Calgary Rowing Club. Lane five, Nearad. Lane six, Sarasota. And lane seven from Philadelphia, we have Vesper. Yeah, that this should be an exciting race. One thing I think it's maybe exciting or interesting, something the athletes may be drawing on, the Dawn Rowing Club athletes may be thinking about what some of their teammates did earlier today halfway across the world. The, the junior women's pair that represented Canada were two Dawn athletes. They placed fifth today in the A final. So well done to those two athletes. And we'll see if John and Christian in lane three racing the Dawn crew here, see if they can maybe draw on that success, draw on that inspiration and see what they can do against the rest of this field. Yeah, it looks like Dawn got off to a clean start uh, as, as well as Sarasota. So the, these athletes, for a number of them, this would be the, the first year they've been racing in the finals at Henley. So some of them nerves are going to play into this. Uh, it's the first time they've really been on a, a big stage with a very tight level of competition. Uh, Dons as well. So far, Dons has won two of the three sculling events here uh, at this year's Canadian Henley Regatta. Christian Goff and uh, John Appleton, they were in the quad that won. Um, and then Eric Seawright also won the uh, under-17 single. So they could be looking to make this a, a clean sweep of the sculling events. That sweep of sculling, <laughs> excellent. Well done, Mike. Um, no, this this should be really exciting. I think we saw some really excellent racing. You know, we don't we don't always expect dominant performances out of the under 17 and even the under 19 categories. Sometimes those uh, categories lend themselves due to the inexperience of the athletes. Typically, they tend to have a little more variance. But earlier today in the women's under 17 single, we saw just an absolutely dominant commanding performance out of Winnipeg. So it'll be interesting to see if we can have maybe a, a repetition of that in here the men's under 17 double but as they approach the 500 meter pylon with one quarter of the race down there is not much to give between calgary rowing club what looks to be near reed um wow don rowing club sarasota everyone's really in the mix no <laughs> one's been dropped after 500 meters yeah seattle's still maintaining contact with that lead pack that's a, an impressive feat uh to see in the under 17 event these athletes, some of them are very good out of the start. Here you have six boats um, across at the 500 meter pylon. Some of these athletes might be a little surprised to see themselves at the front of the pack, uh, not sure what to do, but you're gonna see them, the ones that are gonna be successful, they're gonna draw on their race plans, um, stay focused on what their coach has told them to do and, and make sure that they follow that to a T because in the small boats, you see a lot more jockeying than in the big boats. Yeah, that is one thing. Um we, we've really been talking about a lot, I think, over the course of this live stream of all the finals. You really typically don't see, you know, as much as these are under 17s, and, and I was mentioning there's a lot of variance, or you can get variance in those types of races. The small boats lends itself that much more. The boats don't weigh a lot. The, the boat speed is easy to pick up or easy to lose. You can see a lot more, as you say, jockeying for positions. Yeah, Sarasota looking really strong over at the top of your screen in lane six. Looks like they might have opened up a, a little bit of a gap here. They're followed closely by Nearad. Looks like Calgary and uh, Dawn are still doing well tracking uh, Sarasota. Calgary's junior rowing pl uh, program has certainly uh, improved over the last five years. They're starting to bring more junior athletes here, uh, and for them to be in the final is a, a great accomplishment. This is one of the most popular events at the regatta. Yeah, one thing I, I learned earlier about what Calgary does, the location they train, it is a local reservoir. So it's very dependent on the weather, on the conditions, and also on the municipality. So it's really dependent on where the uh, water level is at. So sometimes they might not even get on the water until late May, which can really be challenging and I think speaks to the pedigree of the coaches, the athletes, and the winter training they must go through to have obviously a very dominant senior women's program. You get athletes like Carl Hare who used to row as a junior, 
for Calgary Rowing Club. He raced this weekend at Junior Worlds in the men's Cox 4 for Canada that placed 7th, winning the B final. And of course, Michael Klassen and Jarvis Chandler doing an excellent job out of lane 4 here in the men's under-17 double. Yeah, Calgary looks like they opened up a slight lead coming through the 1,000 meter mark. Um, only a few seconds, but you still saw four boats coming through not far behind them. So it, it's still a tight race. Um, you're going to see positions uh, change. So some of these crews might have put more of an effort into the the second 500 some of them have decided no at the thousand meter mark they're going to make a push maybe around the 1250 and you can see it looks like calgary started to bring their stroke rate up a little bit to try and um reel sarasota back in and it's interesting to see now Sarasota becoming a bit more of a, a powerhouse and having more and more competitive crews. Of course, you don't always think of Florida when you think about rowing, but Sarasota, they did host the World Championships last year, last September, down in Florida um, for you know World Rowing, the Senior World Championships. And it's interesting to see, exciting to see, I think, always when a new club, new program really starts to come on strong. And that's what Sarasota has certainly done here and all week here at the 136th Canadian Henley. And today, Logan Brown and Owen Core in lane six doing a really good job through three quarters of the under-17 men's double. Yeah, they're rowing at a fairly conservative stroke rate of uh, about 33 strokes a minute. Uh, I was trying to get a rate on Calgary. They look to be a couple of beats higher. So Sarasota, if they feel they're being pressed uh, a bit more, then they can bring that stroke rate up. Uh, and have a little bit more room to breathe. But Calgary's still tracking them, uh, still within um, distance of uh, striking through in the bottom 500. Yeah, and the rest of the field, even the next four boats, uh, it did seem to be Seattle just a little bit ahead, but really nothing to give between you know fourth through sixth place. So no crew is giving in, no crew is giving up. They are fighting down to the final last strokes as we enter into the final quarter, the last 500 meters of this 2,000 meter race. It does seem to be Sarasota's race, but Calgary just a bit of open water behind. They're definitely going for it. As you say, Mike, their stroke rate is higher. They're definitely sending the boat, trying to catch up and close in on Sarasota. Perhaps Sarasota may be a little more controlled, a little more confident as they approach the red buoys. Yeah, Seattle uh, at the bottom of your screen in lane two, looking like they're trying to close the gap. Them and Dons are having a, a good battle. The the Dons boat coached by uh, Horatio Tandilla, he's done a fantastic job since he's taken over the Dons rowing program producing a number of Henley winners, consistently putting athletes on the, the junior national team and uh, Canamex. So it's really been uh, quite a positive addition to the Don's rowing family. Yeah, Don really having a good showing so far this week at Canadian Henley, and a lot of it, I think, attributed to Horatio. Looks like Sarasota. They're in the red buoys now. Um, they're going to keep going. They don't have another race left. These athletes are going to be done today. Looks like Calgary is trying to close the gap a little bit. I'm not sure if there's enough real estate uh, for them to reel in Sarasota at this point. Yeah, and I think Sarasota just rowing still fairly clean. You can't quite see the fatigue in their technique as much as you might see it in Calgary. So I think it is going to be Sarasota taking the win, unofficially, of course. You see just in the picture-in-picture, the picture, a nice celebration, a bit of a slap uh, on the water and on the stroke seats back from the bow seat. He is just enthusiastic, of course. That is bow seat Logan Brown at stroke Owen Core, coached by Caitlin Crouch all from Sarasota crew down in Florida. Yeah, that was a really great race for these under-17 athletes to have six boats coming across and being so tight throughout the race. It's a good experience for these athletes to take with them as they move on to the fall season. Some of the Canadian athletes will be taking part in the National Rowing Championships out in Burnaby, uh, and some will just use this experience for the fall season or, or going forward next spring into CSSRAs and uh, the 137th Canadian Henley. One thing I, I wanted to note, uh, we just saw in the picture-in-picture the crews as they're all coming across the line. One thing I always like to see, and one of my favorite moments after any race, regardless of how I finished, you get the camaraderie. You get the, hey, how's it going? Like, good race, well done, a lot of nodding. We saw in the picture in picture there. So these under 17 athletes being excellent sports, lots of friendships being built across the really uh, continent here. So good to see.